Hello, this is Martin here from Secrets, the channel for learning about trading and investing and welcome to a brand new episode of the risk management for trading learning series and today we are going to see all about trade outcome analysis. So if you are not subscribed, please subscribe right away and then pass it on the link, share it with all your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit and it doesn't cost you much and it helps us a lot. So let's get into and see what is that we are going to talk about. So trading is a business, right? It's just like any other business. A business has got transactions, a business is having a buy, buying of something or selling of something, right? So that need to be generaled and analyzed you need to analyze that just like how we do the analysis for a particular project with analysis of you know the performance of different departments how to look at how we can improve them just like we do that in any other business whether it's e-commerce or any other business that's the same that holds good in trading as well we have to look at it that way now why do we need to do that why do we need to handle the same way as we look at the performance of a business? No, but you know, because the broker of back office does not provide anything, broker back office just tells you the pain or the profit and the loss. But I don't know what unless we have our own analysis that is done on that, we never come to know what went wrong, right? If we don't have a journal of our own, if we don't maintain the records and analyze the performance of that, how else do we know? Where did the slippage happen? What is slippage of our strategy? Is it is it performing the same way as it was back test the back test itself? So is it working the same way as the forward test as well? The or in the production live is it the same? What is the drawdown that's currently at? All of this information is not provided. Is not known to the broker first of all. It's your strategy, your rules. You're just using broker uh, as a platform to put in the trade. So. It is mandatory that you need to have some kind of outcome analysis system of your own, right? And you may not be able to, you know, do away with that. That is for sure. So that is exactly what we are going to you know, look at in this. So the outcome analysis of, of, of the trade has got several aspects, you know, that is mentioned here. It can be the trading style. No, it involves the strategy of course and the idea that's behind the trade, the rules, set of rules. It involves the journaling of that, you know, the journaling of the rules and the outcomes of that. It involves the position sizing, you know. it involves the execution of the trade and also you know, collectively it involves the optimization of that as well, right. So all of this comes into the part, you know, the risk management. Let's see each of that. Well. So, what has uh, you know, the trading style and strategy got to do with uh, the outcome of the trade? It it has a wrong trading style. You no, know, it's not fitting the personality of the trader. Is a big risk, and it need to be identified. It cannot be identified in the back test, right? No matter back, what back test you do, right? If the fitment of the person of the strategy to the personality of the person would come in only identified later stage so the earlier we identify that and early we try to mitigate that the better right so it's a that's a risk there are numerous trading styles right and there are numerous ways of trading the strategies right but uh, it is not necessary that a person doing the same strategy could have the same result as that of another person doing exactly the same strategy it did not work that way because the fitments are different so you have the breakout systems you have the mean versions style of strategies you have the directional you have the non-directional you have the trend following etc etc a number of rules and you know but what fits into the traders mindset you no know, is a different thing it comes out only as part of the execution right doesn't come out in the back test, comes out in the forward test, and therefore it is important when we discuss about trading style and trading strategies, you know, 
and the fitment of the person who trades it so the trading ideas need to be back tested to derive the expectancy drawdowns and all that but in addition it need to be validated right uh, in the forward testing as well so that's the relevance of the outcome analysis trading style and the, and the, and the trading idea behind the style and journal that we're coming to how do we do that so trading journal helps you to understand the execution errors of course right what was the expect for example what you no know, if you talk about an example what was the no no initial stop loss did you trade as per the rule or you exited early was there any slippage was it same as what was tested right so all of this gets recorded trading job so the psychology fitment to trade that particular set of rules you know and the flaws that happen in the execution are critical right so the position sizing optimizations is also another need for the journal right you you cannot optimize if you don't have a journal of that right you cannot understand what happened other than the pnr the pnr is not the only thing we look at what is things are there so trading analysis the trade analysis outcome right outcomes can be analyzed only from the trading chart so this is an example this is not this is one small example of you know one of the you know uh, just for um, demonstration purpose you know how you know i make some of the trading charts this is only the learning part so you can see that the you know, trade happened and what what are the trade details right um um you know, what, what what is the market doing at that when the trade was taken what you learn from that what mistake did you do and what are the pnl that you know the outcome of that so these are some of the parameters that can be included in the trading chain you know? they are not the only parameters you can have you need to have additional lot of parameters like what time you entered what price you entered what is the risk reward you know, we'll see of that you know? so this is an example of a journal so basically it need to keep you know this screenshot is just to make make sure that trading journal does not just mean the price you know and the pnl details only it involves the mistakes that you have done right the kind of market that you are dealing with what is the you know and that also the learning that you made from that what was going through your mind at that time what what mistake did you do why did you do that you know, all these details all can be included right in the trading channel so trading channel one part is what we saw here and other part would be the analysis the detail analysis performance analysis part so it is performance analysis and the and, and the learnings mistakes and psychology part which so both combined to the recall to trading channel right so the trade analysis sheet can look like this is just for demonstration purpose right so 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 you can see that the entry price right exit price the quantity of the lot what is the brokerage and entry and exit what is the profit you made this much of this profit and what is the risk you know that was involved in that and based on that risk what is the profit so that is one as r multiple and then what is the drawdown and then how many points you got and so also this this is an example of a trade analysis a data capturing screenshot right so now um, another point that we had discussed when we talked about trade outcome analysis is position sizing right so position sizing um, is a critical part of money management right so in the simple terms if you see you know it is a percentage of the capital the total trading capital so that needs to be decided up front you know how much so you may have 50 lakh account 100 lakh and 1 lakh account also. so what percentage of that is the risk that i'm going to take per trade right so that is something that you need to decide second point is per trade how much so what is that actual amount that is coming to here the example given is the prices price of that is the entry price is 85 and exit price is 80 means you you know Uh, essentially you know the stop loss the stop loss that is put in is 80 and it, so five points is the risk that you are 
you, your system is saying so that means that you can take a risk of 250 per trade right so if you have um, that is a point at 250 rupees is the risk amount right so if you have a capital of one lakh or one person of that is thousand that means if you're trading options for example right with the current size of 50 you can you know you, you are risking around you can take up to five lots of it right it means you're risking one percent of your capital essentially right because you know the trade signal the stop loss of that is you know five points which is amounting to 250 so that you know the maximum that you're risking is you are able to risk is thousand and per trade so five lots if you take you know you you will risk you know, in case you are getting stop loud you will be so i'm considering the slippages and all that here so that is separate this is just for understanding the concept right so this is how you calculate what is the total capital what percentage of that you are ready to risk and then divide by the lots they you know find the stop loss that your initial stop loss as per the trading rules that you have and for that stop loss how much of quantity or lots that you can trade for the one person is what we have to find out this is what position spacing fundamental is all about right no this is my mentioning word question sizing is question sizing also you no know, uh, uh, need to be analyzed and optimized right from the trading channel from the outcome of the trade so position sizing and then expectancies and the expectancies performance parameter right? it is nothing but the sum of the r multiple right risk reward ratio r multiple divided by the count of r multiple so let us see what is r first then we'll see what is r multiple and then we will see what is expectancy so r is the risk reward ratio you know that right so one r means so you you are taking a trade of one r risk means what you know you you you're, you're risking 50 rupees and your target indicator profit of 50 rupees so it's one hour right but if you're taking 50 rupees risk and you're uh, targeting for two hour means what the targeting has 100 is a target profit that you're looking at right so it can be expressed in the amount of the points whatever so it's uh, so it's a way of representation of the risk so you know expectancy is based on the risk plus multiple is what this multiple is the total profit that you made divided by how much you risk to get that point right right you risked more than more and you got more there's no point in that for the risk that you have taken what is the profit that you get got right so the pnl the profit that you made divided by right what is the entry price minus the stop loss price right that means i put it into the quantity it is you know, for, for that right so to get that pnl to get that profit or loss amount how much risk did you took that parameter is nothing but r multiple so the sum of all suppose you have you know 100 trades that you have taken the sum of all the 100 r multiples divided by the count of the r multiples that's 100 right so it's mean of the r multiples that is what expectancy is all about so this particular performance parameter would you know what does it indicate right then the pro it indicates the profit or the loss per trade you know, if that means if 100 takes trades are taken right? and if we have a expectancy ratio of 0 0.6 it means that 68 into how much of risk amount say 50 points is 50 into 50 is you no know, if uh, you no know, 2500 into 68 is the total profit that can be estimated to be made from 100 trades that's the way so you have to figure out whether that is adequate or not as per your right uh, your plan right so that's a key criteria that uh, that evolves out of the back testing right the back testing outcome would need to tell whether what is the expectancy of that system right expecting your system is 0 0.6 means it's 60 it can be 0 0.1, 2, 3, whatever, right? So, you know, that tells you what, you know, whether the system is likely to perform or not, right? So, there is, there is 68 into the how much you are risking, that much of profit can be made. The profit can also be, you know, you can expect exit, but what can you expect? What is expected profit or the loss from this trade, right? That is what this indicates. So, these are two 
parameters that we'll be referring in the later slides. That's why we explain this. Portion sizing is very simple. What percentage of your total trading capital are you risking? Right? Are you ready to risk? And risk reward ratio R is how much you are you know, how much is a target profit and how much your risk that you're taking so 2r means that many number of times of profit right so an r multiple means it's a mean of all of those right um, and then it gives you the you know so it gives you the something known as expectancy which is performance parameter which indicates you know, how much you make you know, for the risk that you're taking and you know, uh, so this is what we have to find out you know based on the trade that trade details that we have captured so most of these trade details can be available from the broker back office but additional parameters like what is the risk that you are taken broker would not know it's your risk it's your strategy your rules what is our multiple you have to calculate for down cumulative also so based on all the analysis so you are calculating we can see that you know the expectancy on the right corner is calculated here 0 0.547332 so all expectancies that is calculated for every month april may june july like that right so we also calculate what is the average winner average loser r multiple we saw that r multiple is mean of you know is, is, is indicates how much you know the profit you made for the risk you know, on a percentage basis and then based on that expectancy is calculated overall right and each month wise expectancy also is calculated and so this this equity curve that you see on the downside which is you know, derived from the from the uh, from the drawdown and the cumulative profit parameters that you have you know, the, the cumulative parameters you know, so you, you can see that you are in loss you know, until this point of 16th trade only you start becoming profitable right and so as you, as you get profitable your drawdowns will also reduce right and uh, you no know, so that so so that is plotted on a line chart is what equity covers you know what is the how is your performance trade performance with respect to p analyst moving is what is indicated on so all of this is captured you know either in a tool or using code generated as a report or an excel sheet you can do all of this right now uh, now comes to so we are basically uh, discussing about all these points that we have discussed here right? so we talked about styles you know, style fitment varies with each person so it it is it was tremendous risk unless you identified early the idea and the strategy back testing results need not match with the forward testing so that is the risk Channeling, if you don't have that, we don't know how to measure it. Right? Position sizing, because we need a way of figuring out whether, you know, what is the expected in, uh, expectancy in the backtest. Is it doing the same thing in the forward, in the outcome analysis also? And next two points are what we are discussing: trading execution and trading execution. Is what like, you know, execution has got a lot of. So you may have tested it very well but when you execute it then you may end up, end up with slippages you may end up with NSE itself going down or broker terminal going down or your broadband getting down you, know, you can have like a slowness since your you know system is not at the optimal place or you can have outages that happen you can have free trades that can happen nowadays uh, happening a lot you know, and manual execution error when you did that you made a mistake so all of these are you know trade execution risks which cannot be captured from the broker it can be captured only if you maintain a journal right if you mean you do an outcome analysis can we understand and then take steps to mitigating that right so each of these would have ways of mitigating that if you're but the purpose of this talk is about having a journaling and outcome you know that are capturing an analysis mechanism that needs to be placed outside of the broker system is very crucial that is the purpose of this talk now I'm just trying to summarize because we talked about expectation, execution, strategy, multiple things, journaling. You know? So, just trying to wrap it. So, in any trading system, uh, just look at the left side. So, ideally, we would have a certain trade idea, some kind of existing trade idea that we got from somewhere. 
uh, some books or some YouTube or somewhere you became across that this is likely to perform. That, no? So that may be correct, may be partially correct, may not be correct. No? There are all possibilities. So we do not trade uh, any other idea that we have come across from somewhere else. We do not get ideas on our, our own because you know, we have to learn. We go to all this media and different mediums, books, etc. So we get it from somewhere or the other. That does not mean that we blindly execute that because our money is at stake. Right? It's you know, nobody will put at risk someone's money unless you test it. Validate that, right? Even if you know that it may be right, you know, we need validation for that. You'll be a fool to spend your money or risk your money without knowing it. So we need to backtest it based on the historic data that is that has to be that has to be there for that particular instrument and all that, that particular exchange, right? So based historically how it has performed, right? Uh, so uh, if his, you know, if you apply your rules and your systems and your strategies on the historical data, how would it have performed? How many trades it would have given per month, right? For one trade, how much of risk it would have given? Based on that, what is the expectancy? You know, what is the performance of that strategy? Would be derived initially from the backtest, and then, right? we would look at that and then position size it properly right so having an expectancy and uh, you know uh, the performance you know of a particular strategy or a set of rules that you would apply on live system uh, has uh, does not talk about position sizing right because each person's capital is different right so each person would need to figure out what is the capital that he he need to deploy for that expectancy so we will have to figure out something uh, like how you see on the right side say so say for five lakhs of capital right if he is risking one percent right and uh, if the average trade for his role is giving 15 trades per month and if the expectancy ratio that is back tested is showing that it is giving six and then if the lot size of the instrument or the quantity is 50 then right he would be risking basically 15 points that is around 5000 per trade he would be risking and therefore 6 lots he can take and in a period of 7 months he will be making 2 lakhs of profit on a capital of 7 lakhs right which is 40 percent and then you know subsequently you know this profit would be added up and then it gets compounded so so you have to find some way of projecting your profit estimated profit as per the back tested expectancy or performance parameter of your trading strategy right so only then you will be able to know whether your capital allocation is right or not right so you have to fine-tune and optimize your capital allocation portion sizing basically one person is optimal or two percent is optimal or half percent is optimal for your risk that you are taking all this right has to be tuned based on the expectancy that you are receiving also this expectancy that you are back tested has to be validated with the forward tested results that you are getting in day in day out right? and the last part is right after you have the initial portion dicing that you have done whatever i said again with the outcome and the analysis we would we would need to optimize the portion size and also optimize the trade execution we talked about different execution errors, right? Like slight and CCL page. So we have to find out mitigation of each of these ways, right? Whether you are executing using algorithms or executing manually, we will have to be able to figure out. So to figure out, you need to have a journal and an outcome analysis that has to be done. Only then we will understand, you know, how we will figure. Figuring out a different topic that we are not talking about. But, you know, the purpose is to uh, make you understand the importance of having an outcome analysis system other than your broker's PL report. Right? It is that is very crucial, is what the purpose of all talk is all about. I hope um, this helps you to get an idea on what I was trying to convey. And uh, that's all I have, and thanks for listening. So please uh, subscribe and share it all. And happy trading and happy learning.